Hey guys, welcome to Quick Tips. This is Liam Shai at Paramind. And today I want to talk about repitching vocals with Ableton and Nectar. Now, this is something I get asked about quite a lot, actually, and normally in the context of remixes, uh, that sort of thing, but even in original productions. Uh, the story is basically you want to make a track, you've got a sample library to pull from, but your samples are in different keys. So what do you do when you have a vocal that you want to use, uh, but it's in the wrong key with the rest of your track? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at today. So I'm going to start off with this track. Kind of a disco feel. Yeah, it's Sunday, so disco is always good on Sundays. So we've got this string here, uh, and this is in uh, C minor, as we can tell from the name of the original file. So that's great. And the vocal that we're going to bring in is this guy. I can't be alone one more night. I just need you here by my side. Okay, so as you can see, when I just bring this in, there's a few things wrong with it right from the start. So the first thing that I want to do is get the timing information correct. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and just hover over the file here, and I'm going to see, okay, this was originally recorded at 128, and our session's at 126. So first things first, we need to go ahead and warp this. Now, when I'm starting to warp, I always want to kind of figure out where the one's going to be. I can't be alone on my night. Okay, and I, I'm just going to use this first phrase here, which I actually kind of like the best. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead, ahead to my segment BPM, just type in 126, okay? I'm sorry, 128. So that will tell Ableton that the original tempo was 128, and now to time stretch it to match us at 126. Second thing I'm going to do is take it out of beats mode. I'm going to try Complex Pro and see if that sounds good. I can't be alone one more night. Yeah. I can't be al great, that sounds great. So next thing I want to do is change my loop to make it two bars. So two, zero, cool. I can't be alone one more night. I can't be alone. Yeah. I can't be alone one more night. I can't be alone. And I would say if, if this was my track, I, I like that. I mean, I would let that just kind of ride out for a while. So cool. So we've got the uh, tempo synchronized with our session. However, the original track here is uh, in G minor, uh, the recording, and our strings are in C minor. Now those actually harmonize. It's a perfect fifth, right? C to G. So that's okay. But what I want to do is I want to try to uh, pitch this vocal to be more interesting and also to uh, fit better just with the, uh, the original violin sample here. That's kind of, that's the hook, right? Of this track. So um, first thing I like to do is think, okay, well, if this is in G minor, then I'm basically only one, two, three, four, five half steps away from C on the keyboard. So we could always try to re-pitch this guy up and just hear how that sounds. So now it's actually playing the root note of C. And that actually sounds pretty decent. Um, once we add some harmonization to that, that's going to be pretty cool. So at this point, this is where I want to bring in uh, Nectar by Isotope, Nectar 2, which is absolutely one of my favorite plugins for doing vocal processing. So go ahead and grab Nectar. Cool. So as you can see, when it opens up, you just get a bunch of presets here. These are really fun. You could go through and uh, just try different things out. Um, what's great about Nectar is it's an all-in-one solution. So not only do you have a compressor, a gate, a de saturation, harmony, pitch correction, uh, so on and so forth. There's just a slew of modules here that you can use. So rather than going to six, seven, eight different plugins, you can do it all within the context of one plugin. So not only that, but it sounds amazing. I mean, they really did an outstanding job with this. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Nectar, and uh, we're going to go ahead and use the harmony section here to make this part really come alive. So when we first open this up, we basically have up to four different harmonies, uh, which are called voices that we can layer in with our original voice. So if I just, so 
So here's one, which is correlating here, and two. So I'm gonna just start with one, and let's drop it down an octave. Cool, and then we're gonna add a second one, and we'll go, we'll do a unison voice. We can try another one here up an octave and see how that sounds. One of my favorite parts about this is the pitch and delay section here. So I can actually go and delay these out a little bit. even give them some microtonal fluctuations right in the pitch you could go extreme in one direction or the other we're not going to do that but sometimes it's nice to give it just a slight fluctuation kind of helps it sound thicker After I do that, I always just like to do a little compare and contrast. So, if I was to duplicate this track, reset back to zero, and just bypass Nectar. This is giving us a nice, thick, rich, harmonic sound uh, that the original vocal just didn't have. And if we really wanted to, you know, we could layer these in. You know, at that point, I'd probably group these together and start doing some group processing, right? Kind of gel these together. But I digress. There it is, a quick tip on repitching and harmonizing vocals using Ableton and Nectar. Have a great day, guys. very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind I, I've discovered electronic music and you know San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.